Clarity on Fire, a podcast for people who know what they don't want out of their life and career, but aren't sure what they'd rather be doing. In a world where it's easy to exist, but hard to feel alive, we, Kristen and Rachel, two certified life and career coaches, are here to help you cut through the information overload, get unstuck, and focus not just on how you can have a career you're passionate about, but how to create a whole life that feels fulfilling. So join us here, where we serve up inspiration and down-to-earth wisdom in a way that only two best friends can. We want you to experience the relief of knowing that, yes, you're allowed to want more out of your life and career. And no, you don't have to wander through the dark anymore. Our job is to light the fire that shows you the way. Let's go. By this time, we're going to know what happens. At the Battle of Winter. Oh no. I know. I'm sending myself a note from the past. A to consoling ask, How note? are you feeling after after the anxiety of watching Game of Thrones yesterday? I'm so scared, you guys. I'm gonna be a ball of anxiety. I'm sorry to everyone who doesn't care about Game of Thrones, but also why? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on from that. <laughs> uh here's an old blog from you. When is this from? 2017. Okay, not that long ago. No, not that long ago, but it felt relevant again because I feel like I have multiple clients right now who are entrepreneurially curious and are considering starting businesses, but they want to know if it's the right thing to do. And I think a lot of people, we're in the side hustle economy, we're in the side gig economy, and people are wondering, should I do my own thing? And so as someone who I started my own thing, I am just going to be really honest with you about what to expect and what it's really like and who is probably best suited for it. So that's what today's about. Okay. I don't know if you should quit your job and work for yourself. All right. Well, someone's going to need to know about that. (laughs) Also, we'll be back at the end because we have some recommended listening. And I think you tried to pick episodes that maybe they haven't actually heard before. Not necessarily our most popular, but very relevant and good nonetheless. I'm really annoyed that all of our episodes aren't the most popular, but like, you know, you can't change. Statistically, it can't work. I mean, I guess it could technically, but it would be really weird if every single episode the exact same amount of downloads. (laughs) But they all deserve it. (laughs) Okay, see you in seven minutes. How to tell if you should quit your job and work for yourself. You've seen the Facebook ad promoting that you too can have your own business making six figures from your couch while wearing yoga pants or no pants. Just download this quick guide and you're on your way. And you can't miss the countless Instagram accounts of burgeoning entrepreneurs who, at least according to their carefully curated social media feed, seem to constantly be working poolside, traveling the world with just their laptop, and generally living it up now that they're self-employed. Maybe you've even read The 4-Hour Workweek or another one of those countless entrepreneurial books that have hit the bestseller list in recent years, promising huge payoffs and tons of freedom in exchange for just a few hours a week of running your lifestyle business online. In case you're not familiar with the term, lifestyle business, it's the newly popular way of describing a business you create with the primary intention of it supporting your ideal lifestyle. Usually that means having location independence, total creative freedom, schedule flexibility, and unlimited income potential. Sounds amazing, right? It's no wonder so many people are attracted to this concept right now. Millennials in particular seem to want more flexibility and autonomy in their career than previous generations. So a lot of us find the idea of a lifestyle business especially alluring. But no matter who you are, this is tempting. I'm sure you're sensing a but coming, and you're right. Well, more like a yield sign, because I'm obviously a big fan of lifestyle businesses. I'm the freaking co-owner of one. And it's actually because I'm so intimately familiar with the inner workings of this type of entrepreneurship that I want to make it super clear what it's really like behind the scenes. That way, if you're considering starting your own lifestyle business, or if you're feeling tempted by those perfectly posed Instagram photos of laptops and exotic locations, you will have a real picture of what it's like so you can make the right decision for you. Why having a lifestyle business is awesome. Let me first assure you that I love my business and I wouldn't trade it for any other career in the world. 
Although you could tempt me with a job at Black Jaguar White Tiger, one of Rachel's and my Instagram obsessions. There are a lot of perks to having a lifestyle business. One, I'm fully in charge of my own schedule, which means I can take a random Wednesday off just because I want to, go to yoga in the middle of the day, or have a two-hour lunch with a friend without checking the time, and never have to worry how many vacation or sick hours I have left. I get to make the impact I most want to make. I've worked for companies that had respectable missions that I genuinely cared about, along with a few that I never cared about, but it wasn't nearly as fulfilling as doing the work I most want to do in the world, helping people become more self-aware and really know themselves on a deep level so they can create a life and career that perfectly suits them. I have total freedom over the creativity in my work. Everything about Clarity on Fire, from the design choices to the programs we offer to each individual blog post, is 100% representative of who we are and what we stand for. I never have to pretend to care about something I don't, or hold back my opinions, or in any way alter who I am in order to succeed in my career. I work with amazingly cool people. Not only do I get to work with my best friend of over 10 years, but my clients and our program participants are incredible people too. Which makes sense if you think about it. If I'm quote unquote promoting myself by simply being myself, I'm going to attract people who resonate with me and we're bound to get along swimmingly. I have unlimited income potential. Unlike a traditional job where I'd have a set salary and have to ask for a raise if I wanted to make more, owning my own business means there's no cap on how much I can earn. So I get paid according to how much effort I put in, not how many hours I clock. Okay, now onto the ugly side of having a lifestyle business that no one is talking about. Running a lifestyle business is not all a freaking walk in the park, let me assure you. There are more than a few shit sandwiches that come along with it. Things you're not likely to see on social media or hear many lifestyle entrepreneurs talking openly about. Things like income instability, often for years. Some months you might rake in the dough and other months you'll watch your bank account balance drop without knowing exactly how you're going to replace it. Never knowing if you're doing it right. Since no one's telling you what to do to build and grow your business, you're never totally sure you're doing it the right or the best way. You constantly feel like you're throwing spaghetti against the wall to see what sticks, which can be seriously frustrating. A ton of responsibility for your own financial well-being, for your customers or clients' needs, for the future of your business, etc. The weight of the responsibility can be heavy at times. Never being able to totally disconnect from your business. I always have to take my laptop on vacation just in case someone has an immediate question or needs technical help. Sure, you could hire a team, but that requires paying and managing a team, which gets into even more responsibility. Essentially having two jobs. You have to be equal parts, a business owner, and an expert in the product or service you offer, which are really two totally different jobs. Being fully accountable to yourself. Being your own boss means you're 100% in charge of managing your time, energy, and priority list. It also means you have to hold yourself accountable. Procrastination only hurts you when it's your business. No guarantee of success. There's no magic formula that, if you follow it, guarantees you'll be successful in business. You'll likely spend years pouring yourself into your business with no proof it's going to pay off. Feeling like a slob because you haven't put on real clothes in days. Or brushed your hair. Or put on makeup. Or gone outside except to get the mail. Loneliness and isolation. Running a business can be lonely. This is less of an issue for me than it would be for a solopreneur, since I have a business partner, but even Rachel and I feel isolated sometimes. Not only are you working alone a lot, but it can feel isolating to be doing something somewhat unconventional, especially if you don't have entrepreneurial friends or family to talk about it with. How to tell if you actually want a lifestyle business. Here are a few big things to consider before deciding if you really do want to work for yourself. Consider your values. How strong is your value of stability compared to your desire for autonomy and freedom? What's your risk tolerance? 
By the way, your passion profile will help you identify your values, especially when it comes to how you should be working. Are you willing to eat the shit sandwiches? Sure, the perks of working for yourself are pretty fantastic, but you've got to be willing to put up with the downsides that come along with them. So what's your level of willingness? Explore all of your options before diving headfirst into entrepreneurship. Is there another way you could be just as happy and get some of the same perks of self-employment without full-out quitting and working for yourself? For example, remote work. If you really value flexibility, then working remotely for someone else might scratch that itch with way less responsibility and unpredictability. If you value leadership, then being an intrapreneur, someone who champions an idea or spearheads a mission within a company, might be perfect for you and way less lonely. Commission-based work. If you really value unlimited income potential but don't want to be in charge of the whole business, you might thrive in a commission-based environment where you're paid more for your effort than for your time. A side business or project. If you really value creativity and autonomy, then you could pursue a side business or a project to express yourself, help others, and create something that's all your own without the pressure of it needing to fully replace your income. I've heard entrepreneurship described as living a few years of your life like most people won't so that you can spend the rest of your life like most people can't. And that's pretty much spot on. The question to ask yourself is, does that excite you? or turn you off. Tell me, have you considered working for yourself? How do you feel after seeing this behind the scenes perspective? Or if you already do work for yourself, do you have more to add to my list of pros and cons? Share with me in the comments. Okay, you have some recommended listening. I do. All right, numero uno. Ghosting Your Job with Lana Jackson from back in May, 2018. Lana, as we were interviewing, was in the process of closing up her job and starting a business. So she has some really good advice for what it's like to start your business while working full-time and making that transition. And she shares her story. It's very candid. So it would be helpful for people to hear who are considering doing that. There's another one, a blog about how to transform what you don't want into what you do want from... That's actually older than this, but we republished it in August 2018. There's actually a free worksheet download. Correct. With that blog. So this will help you if you're like, I don't know idea what I want, but maybe I can use all of the information that I've collected about the things I hate <laughs> to get me clearer on what I would rather be doing. It's a good place to start, especially if you're new to us. Yep. Another blog, why you should keep new ideas to yourself from December 2018. So if you have a business idea that you're considering, maybe don't run around and tell everyone you know first thing before sitting with the idea and working it out yourself for a little bit, this will encourage you to keep some of those business ideas to yourself a little bit longer so that they have some time to grow and maybe become reality. Yeah, don't let people sneeze on your new baby. That's what I said in that intro, I think. We talked about that. At some point, we talked about that. Sneezing on babies? (laughs) Well, yeah, you don't want to get them sick. They're so new. Their immune system's so weak. It's true. Yeah, same with your ideas. Okay, and then... We have a side chat from December of 2018 about the four passion profiles. So if you're new to us, please take the passion profile quiz. Go to our site, Clarity on Fire, take the quiz, get your result, download it, and then listen to that episode. Because very likely, you could be the kind of person who's, if you're entrepreneurial curious, um, wired to be an entrepreneur, someone who values freedom and flexibility and autonomy. And maybe... You've been thinking there's something wrong with you because you can't just like working. A lot of people struggle with that. I struggle with that. What the hell's wrong with me? I don't like working for other people. I think it's annoying. I don't want to be here from nine to five. And then sometimes you might be trying to quit your job or you might feel inclined to quit your job for maybe more escapist reasons or because you don't know what else to do. And sometimes people think starting a business is going to be great and like the thing that saves them, but they might not be wired to work in that way. And it might actually be a totally different kind of problem and challenge. Exactly. So knowing your passion profile, knowing how your career and your passion are meant to intersect, and most importantly, how you are meant to work, not necessarily what you're meant to be doing, how you're meant to work, is the place you need to start to understand what direction is ideal for you to move in. 
And even if you are dead set on starting your own business, your profile is going to have a lot to do with how you structure that business. If you're a tribe member, you're going to have a very different kind of business than a fire starter would. And all of them are quite different in terms of the kind of business you might want to start. Yeah. And the way you want to run that business and how many hours you want to put in. So no two businesses are the same and no two ways of doing business are the same. And your passion profile has a lot to do with how you would show up in business and at work and life in general. So go listen to that side chat about the four passion profiles if you need more info on the whole passion profile system. Yep. And we will be back on Friday with a Dear Rachel. Ooh, yes. Yeah, we got three questions from... And there's a theme going on. And we're going to challenge you to discover the theme. I'm pretty sure any, you know, educated middle schooler will be able to figure it out. (laughs) It's pretty obvious. (laughs) But yeah, challenge yourself. Okay, see you then. Bye.